sternum. The sternum, or breastbone, is an elongated flat bone which lies in the anterior median part of the chest wall. It is about 7 centimeters long. Parts The sternum consists of the following three parts. Upper part, the manubrium sterni, or episternum. Middle part, the body, or mesosternum. And the lower part, the xiphoid process, or metasternum. The sternum resembles a dagger or a small sword in shape. Its three parts, the manubrium, body, and xiphoid process, represent the handle, blade, and point of the sword, respectively. The upper part of the sternum is broad and thick, whereas its lower part is thin and pointed. Its anterior surface is slightly rough and convex, while its posterior surface is smooth and slightly concave. The manubrium and the body of the sternum lie at an angle of 160 degrees to each other, which increases slightly during inspiration and decreases during expiration. Anatomical Position In anatomical position, the sternum as a whole is directed downwards and is inclined slightly forward with its rough convex surface facing anteriorly. Its broad end is directed upwards and lower pointed end is directed downwards. Features and Attachments Manubrium It is roughly quadrilateral in shape. It lies opposite the third and fourth thoracic vertebrae. It is the thickest and strongest part of the sternum and presents the following features. Two surfaces, anterior and posterior. Four borders, superior, inferior, and left and right lateral borders. Anterior surface on each side provides attachment to the sternal head of the sternocleidomastoid and pectoralis major muscles. The posterior surface is smooth and forms the anterior boundary of the superior mediastinum. On each side, it provides attachment to two muscles, sternohyoid at the level of the clavicular notch and sternothyroid at the level of the facet for the first coastal cartilage. The upper half is related to three branches of the arch of the aorta, brachiocephalic artery, left common carotid artery, left subclavian artery, and left brachiocephalic vein. The upper border is thick, rounded, and concave. It presents a notch called the suprasternal notch or jugular notch. It provides attachment to the interclavicular ligament. The clavicular notch on either side of the suprasternal notch articulates with the clavicle to form the sternoclavicular joint. The lateral border presents with two articular facets. The upper facet articulates with the first coastal cartilage to form a primary cartilaginous joint. The lower demifacet along with the other demifacet in the body of the sternum articulates with the second coastal cartilage. The manubrium makes a slight angle with the body at this junction called the sternal angle or angle of Lewis. It is recognized by the presence of a transverse ridge on the anterior aspect of the sternum. Body The features of the body are as follows. It is longer, narrower, and thinner than the manubrium. It is broadest at its lower end. Its upper end articulates with the manubrium at the sternal angle to form the manubrial sternal joint. Its lower end articulates with a xiphoid process to form a primary cartilaginous xiphy sternal joint. Its anterior surface presents three faint transverse ridges, indicating the lines of fusion of four small segments called sternobrae. The anterior surface of each side gives origin to the pectoralis major muscle. Its posterior surface is smooth and slightly concave. The lower part of the posterior surface gives origin to the sternocostalis muscle. On the right side of the median plane, posterior surface is related to the pleura, which separates it from the lung. On the left side of the median plane, upper half of the body is related to the pleura and the lower half to the pericardium. Its lateral border articulates with the second to the seventh coastal cartilages to form synovial joints. Strictly speaking, the second coastal cartilage articulates at the side of the manubriosternal junction and the seventh coastal cartilage articulates at the xiphy sternal junction. Xiphoid process. It is the lowest and smallest part of the sternum. It varies greatly in size and shape. It may be bifid or perforated. Its anterior surface provides insertion to the medial fibers of the rectus abdominis. Its posterior surface gives origin to the sternal fibers of the diaphragm. 
Its tip provides attachment to the upper end of the linea alba. Features of interest at the sternal angle include the following. The sternal angle can be felt at the transverse ridge on the sternum about 5 cm below the suprasternal notch. The sternal angle is an important surface landmark for many anatomical events. These are The second coastal cartilage articulates on either side with the sternum at this level. Hence, this level is used for counting the ribs. It lies at the level of the intervertebral disc between T4 and T5. A horizontal plane passing through this level separates the superior mediastinum from the inferior mediastinum. The ascending aorta ends at this level. The arch of the aorta begins and ends at this level. The descending aorta begins at this level. The trachea bifurcates into right and left principal bronchi at this level. The pulmonary trunk divides into right and left pulmonary arteries at this level. The upper border of the heart lies at this level. The azygous vein arches over the root of the right lung to end in the superior vena cava. Clinical correlation Sternal puncture The manubrium sterni is a preferred site for bone marrow aspiration because it's subcutaneous and readily accessible. The bone marrow sample is required for hematological examination. A thick needle is inserted into the upper part of the manubrium to avoid injury to the arch of the aorta, which lies behind its lower part. The sternal puncture is not advisable in children because in them, the plates of compact bone of the sternum are very thin and if the needle passes through the manubrium, it will damage the arch of the aorta and its branches, leading to fatal hemorrhage. Funnel chest or pectus excavatum. It refers to the abnormal shape of the thoracic cage in which the chest is compressed anteroposteriorly and the sternum is pushed backwards by the overgrowth of the ribs. This may compress the heart. Pigeon chest or pectus carinatum. This refers to the abnormal shape of the thoracic cage in which the chest is compressed from side to side and the sternum projects forwards and downwards like a keel of a boat. Sternal fracture. It is commonly seen in automobile accidents. This happens when the driver's chest hits up against the steering wheel. The sternum is often fractured at the sternal angle. The backward displacement of the fractured fragments may damage the aorta, heart, or liver and can cause severe bleeding which may be fatal. Ossification The sternum develops from two vertical cartilaginous plates which fuse in the midline. The sternum ossifies from six double centers one for the manubrium, four for the body, and one for the xephoid process. Appearance The centers appear in descending order for four different parts of the sternum and are as follows. The center for the manubrium appears by the fifth month of intrauterine life. The centers for the body. First sternebra by the sixth month of intrauterine life. Second sternebra by the seventh month of intrauterine life. Third sternum bra by the eighth month of intrauterine life. Fourth sternum bra by the ninth month of intrauterine life. And lastly, the center for the xephoid process appears by the third year. Fusion. Fusion occurs as follows. Fusion between the sternal plates takes place from below upwards. It begins at puberty and is completed by 25 years. Clinical correlation. Sternal foramen and cleft sternum. The two sternal plates fuse in a caudocranial direction. Sometimes sternebrae fail to fuse in the midline. As a result, a defect occurs in the body of the sternum in the form of a sternal foramen or cleft sternum. Cleft sternum is often associated with ectopia cordis.